BlueCat Cisco DNA Center Adaptive Plugin enhances visibility into IP address utilization to maintain uptime of critical applications and services. Let's dive right in. We'll start by logging into DNA Center. Under Design, select Network Settings and click on IP Address Pools. Here you will see we have already created an empty pool. It's empty because it doesn't have any subnets with assigned IP addresses. If we go to the BAM, you will see that there currently aren't any blocks created. If we integrate the workflow successfully, it will appear in this part of the BAM configuration. To integrate, go to the System menu and select Settings. From the menu on the left, select IP Address Manager. Here we will type in the name of the server and put in an address of the gateway workflow. If you use HTTPS, you can verify the certificate here so it will allow the application to call it. We now provide the username and password for the workflow. We make sure that we select generic for the provider. As mentioned earlier, this is necessary to call the BlueCat provided workflow and not the Cisco provided version, which currently does not work with the latest version of Integrity. We created a specific configuration called Cisco DNA for this demonstration. Use that configuration for your view name and click Save. Now we check the BlueCat address manager in the Cisco DNA configuration for the change. Now we'll demonstrate creating some pools with servers to see how they get imported into Address Manager. To do this, we must first create the servers. Go to Design, Network Settings, and create some DHCP and DNS servers. We'll start with creating three DHCP servers. Now we'll create a couple of DNS servers. Click Save. Now go to the IP address pools and we'll add a pool. We'll give it a subnet. And we'll select the DHCP servers and the DNS servers we just created previously. Note that in order for these server roles to be created, the servers must already exist. So here we have three servers that we created previously with these three addresses. But we only have three of the five servers created. So when we go back and click Save, we will check the server roles for the block that was created and see that three of the five servers were created because those three servers actually exist. Clicking on the deployment roles, we see that two DHCP server roles and one DNS server role were created along with this block. Here is the first one of type none, the second one of type DHCP primary, and the third one is about DNS. If we go back to the DNAC, we can see that it lists all five servers, including these two that don't exist on the BAM. Now let's create a subpool. Click on the reserve button and type in the information. We'll give it a subpool name, select the parent, give it a prefix length, and then select our DHP and DNS servers. Hit reserve. Now we'll go back to the address manager. You can see we've created a subpool. We click on the subpool, click on the deployment roles, and you'll see we have two deployment roles there for the servers that exist. Next, we will demonstrate importing blocks from the BAM into the DNAC. First, we need to have some blocks defined in the BAM. We'll start with an empty block and one that contains a network. Let's go back to the DNAC. Click on the Design, Settings, and IP Address Pools. Use the Import button at the top right. 
and select Import from the BAM IPAM server. Type in the seeder and click Retrieve. It will show the pool if it's available. Select the pool and click Import. You now see the empty pool. We will now demonstrate what happens when you modify a pool or a sub pool. Although I will mention this later in Issues and Concerns, it must be noted that if a user attempts to create a sub pool or of the same size as the global pool, it will work in Cisco, but BlueCat requires it to be a network, so it will not be reflected in the band. However, there is a good reason to still do this, and let me demonstrate what I mean. Here we attempt to create a sub pool of the same size as its parent global pool. We'll give it a name. We'll select the global pool that it belongs to. And since we want it to be the same size as the global pool, we'll just hit reserve. Now let's check the BAM. We'll refresh the screen. Notice that the sub pool does not exist because this is not allowed in the band, and neither does the network. But since Cisco doesn't create the network, we'll create one now. Now here's what I want to demonstrate. So let's go back to the global pool and look at the properties. We're going to edit it and we're going to change the gateway address on the global pool. What I want to demonstrate here is there's a, a bug right now in the callout for Cisco. This is not a blue cat thing, but this is Cisco's callout. So we've just changed the gateway address. Now that should show up on the BAM as being updated. Notice it is updated here. We're going to go to the BAM, we're going to click on the network and look at the address space. Notice that the gateway address didn't change. Hmm, so what happened? Let's go back to the DNAC. Now if we go back to the DNAC, we're going to edit it again. And this time we're just going to change the name. And then we're going to hit save. Now, if we go back, notice that the, the uh, gateway address is still there. Now, if we go back and we refresh the BAM, the address changed. I wanted to point this out because what we noticed is that if you edit properties on a global pool, they will not be reflected in the network on the BAM unless you go back and resave with a different name. If you do that, and this is only for global pools, it will then save the pool, and it will save that data in the network. Now what I want to point out is that this does not happen at the subpool level. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to change a property on the subpool. Here, notice we created a separate server on that address. We're going to go back now and notice that that uh, current network does not have a role defined for either a DNS or a DHCP server. So we don't have any roles. So now we're going to go back and we're going to actually create a DHCP server. With the same address that was defined in the BAM. Save it. Now this time, instead of going to the global pool, we're going to go to the sub pool. So we're going to go over to the left, we're going to click on the sub pool set, and we're going to select the sub pool. Notice here, we don't have a DHCP server defined. So now we're going to go up and we're going to click the edit button. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to add this particular JHP server, and we're also going to change the gateway just to show the difference here. So we're going to put in our own gateway for that particular network, 
We're going to set the DHP server to the new one. And then we're going to click Save. Now we're going to go back to the BAM. We're going to refresh our deployment roles. See, notice we now have the deployment role there. And we're going to go back to the IP address space. And notice we now have the new gateway. So you can see the difference here. If you do any action on the sub pool, it automatically handles it. If you do it on the global pool, you have to change the name in order for it to be accepted. This is a known issue with Cisco, and uh, they are aware of it, and hopefully they are going to repair it, but there is a workaround for now. And I just want to make sure that this is made known so that it can be used and worked around. Note, when creating a subpool on the DNAC, only a block is created on the BAM. A network does not get created until an address or server role is first assigned to it. A user can either modify the gateway address or can use the API provided by Cisco to allocate an IP address. Let's demonstrate. We will assign an IP address to a global pool. Notice that we have an empty block, pool2, on the BAM that matches the pool on the DNAC. We will select the name and copy it so that we can use it in the DNAC API call. We need to first call the API to get the ID of the pool associated with the name. We copy the ID and use it in the call to assign two IP addresses to that pool. Let's execute the call and check the results. We'll look at the BAM first. Refresh the screen. You will now see that the network has been created and the two IP addresses assigned. Cisco also has a release API call that works the same. Uh, you get the pool name first and then you call the release API. Um, once you remove those IP addresses, they will be removed on the BAM as well. The last part of this demonstration will show how to release a pool or subpool. We'll start by taking a look at some existing blocks that we have on the BAM. These blocks are also reflected on the DNAC. So we're going to, it's very easy to delete. We just go in here and we delete it. You get the warning, delete. If we go back to the BAM, we'll refresh the page. Notice that the block is now gone. Now that was easy to do because there were no IP addresses assigned within that block or network. Uh, but let's see what happens if we try to delete one that does have IP addresses assigned. Now let's take a look at this global pool and we can see that there are sub pools already assigned here with addresses. Let's try to delete it. Notice this time you will get an error because there are addresses assigned and it will not delete it until you delete those addresses. And that's BlueCat's Cisco DNA Center generic plugin. Visit bluecatnetworks.com to learn more.